Echo's Box Podcast is not meant to be or claiming to be a good place for therapeutic advice. The host is not a licensed therapist and is not offering any services or advice related to mental health in a professional manner. The content discussed on Echo's Box is commonly highly explicit due to the real nature of expressing honest emotions. While we don't mean to offend anyone, the reality is these discussions might be triggering to many people. Out of respect for all, please do not listen if this content isn't right for you, and forgive us if you have a poor experience. Keep your brain healthy. Welcome back to Echo's Box. You were just listening to a song that has no title or release date yet, and it was pretty heavy, right? (laughs) So if you're new here, you know that I like to share music that I'm working on or just music of similar artists that I like, and I just play some snippets at the start and end of every episode. Uh, And lately I've been sharing a lot of like my new pop stuff, but that's not actually what I'm working on at the moment. I'm, I'm not working on pop stuff right now. Instead, I'm actually working on some heavy stuff. So uh, that song that you just heard a snippet of is a brand new heavy project that I'm working on with a buddy of mine named Ricky. We've done some stuff in the past. I think there's a, a cover out there of Jack Defunk. We did like a, a, I tried to do like a dance Gavin dance style vocal performance over like this funky riff uh, from a game that he made. Uh, not he made, but a game that he was playing a soundtrack from. Anyway, that was dope. And we, we've we been bouncing like heavy tracks back and forth for a bit trying to like find like some vocals that fit or something he really liked what i went in and did on this so we're gonna try to make it happen for real uh he's really the one who's doing all the hard hard work i just have to deliver the heavy vocals so what you heard on the mic just now was me and i'm pretty proud of and stoked on the the performance so far but that the way you just heard is a very rough version it's like a vocal demo version so keep that in mind if you go back and listen again there's some shit i need to fix in there and, and it also needs a proper mix it's not really mixed at all um, that just made it louder. So anyways, uh, yeah, that was the music on to the episode. This is episode 34 overwhelmed, and we are going to get right into it. Um, as you may have noticed, there was no episode last month, and that is because I have been feeling very stupidly overwhelmed lately. That's hence the name of the episode. So, uh, just to catch you up to speed, uh, I started working at a brand new job about a month and a half ago and adjusting just hasn't been easy. Uh, Work stress is actually over now. Last week was much better. Uh, But when I first started about a month and a half ago, they dumped me right into this big fancy project on day one. (laughs) And we succeeded. The project went went off without a hitch. Everything was great. Everybody was super happy with the results. Uh, But between that over the last month and a half, uh, music stuff going on, whether it's shows or rehearsals or whatever, uh, my personal relationships, friendships, romantic relationships, work, uh, which I already said, uh, all that stuff and just maintaining my mental health, I have had zero extra time. And unfortunately, when I have zero extra time, the podcast is usually the first thing that I have to let go of temporarily. And that's what happened last month. But this month, we're, we're kind of back on it. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll kind of be able to keep up with the next coming months and, and some of the things that I'm dealing with die down. I'm hoping through this month that it will get a little bit easier. But right now, fucking overwhelmed. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. So it it might be a little bit of a shorter episode, but I felt that even though I'm overwhelmed, doing this was better than not doing it. It gets it off my plate. And besides, I've I've not shared some deeper personal experiences as of late. I've been talking about other things and not really the whole cornerstone of shared experiences. I've just kind of been bouncing around different topics and and sharing, not that I'm not sharing experiences, but mental health specifically. Uh, So on that note, I've been stupid depressed. And I know I'm always depressed. It's the nature of the beast. That's why I'm diagnosed with that. But uh, it's depression in terms of like a spell or a flare up, which is weird. But if you think of inflammation, that's kind of kind of how it feels. So instead of just being my normal level of depressed, which is already pretty terrible, uh, lately I've been so depressed that I I'm heavy. Like 
it's to the point of my body generating physical pain as a symptom, which is common, but it's it's uncomfortable. So for me right now, it's been in the form of headaches or mild body aches, and they're manageable, but it's really, really stupid uncomfortable. On top of being uh, extra depressed, uh, I feel like time is just going really, really fast for me. My birthday is almost here. I've got show after show after show with my boys in Lost in Le Mans. I'm juggling my brand new job, like I said. Uh, maintaining my dog's sanity and health, maintaining uh, or trying to work through my sanity and health and therapy. And I even have like a stupid sty in my eye that's been here for three weeks. And it's, it's too damn long. In fact, it's been here for uh, a month and three weeks. Not literally, but I had it last month. I, I called a teledoc. They sent me some ointment and it went away. And then two weeks later after it went away, it came back and now it's been here for three more weeks. So it's, it's just too much. It's, it's the most annoying thing ever. It hurts less now, which is good. My, my current doctor's working with me, but I just had to call him today to schedule an ophthalmologist appointment or a referral. They're probably going to get him back to me tomorrow, but hopefully that gets taken care of soon. It's just fucking annoying. Jesus Christ. Hate it. So yeah, that's like a physical thing and that's just piling on. It's like pins and needles. So I, you're going to see everything I'm going to say, you're just going to add on. So, okay, he's super depressed. That's already kind of shitty. Uh, he's got some stuff going up, juggling dogs, uh, job, all the kind of stuff. He's got styles. I, yeah, okay. It's annoying. But now all of that, plus my parents are coming to town soon. Uh, I've got to take my dogs to the groomers. I've got, you know, these doctor's appointments I got to schedule therapy appointments, band rehearsals, organizing events with folks for a birthday or the parents and all that. It's, it's a bit much and it, it piles on pretty fast. And I feel like I've just run out of time, even when I should have enough to handle all these things and all of these emotions this the sense of depression uh, intense depression and sense of being overwhelmed comes at a weird time for me everything in my life right now is actually going pretty great my partner's happy in our relationship my dogs are happy and healthy my job's pretty fun outside of that one project and it pays super well so that's great uh, all my music projects are going great yet here i am i feel hollow and empty. I feel like an empty shell because my brain doesn't know how to process the emotion of joy properly. So all these things that should be bringing me joy just aren't. It's very, very frustrating. So yeah, I'm a good bit overwhelmed. There's a lot going on and I'm, I'm just trying to stay on top of daily life within it all, you know, chores and all feeding myself and all that kind of stuff on top of all these other things. And my medications are stable now, which is a godsend, honestly. So, like, I do have a way to manage uh, and give myself some relief, unlike some of the harder depression spells I've had in the past. You know, my Xanax dose is currently really effective. I find that I need it less and less and less. Uh, it really is only useful to me lately when in, I'm having a rough patch of insomnia like I am this, this past week. And, and even last night and hopefully not today. Today we're going to nip in the butt. That's what my therapist told me to do. Um... So yeah, I'll use it when I'm having a bad insomnia spell to kind of kickstart sleep again and retrain my brain how to turn off. Uh, and then if I have really bad panic attacks. But I find that my use of medical marijuana now, now that I'm allowed to freely do that and, and whatever means necessary as needed, uh, I find that I have panic attacks less and less. Now when I do have them, they're really bad and that's what the Xanax is for and I'm thankful that I have it and that, that works for me. But I find that often if I can just use my marijuana medicinally throughout my week I can often relax and elevate my mood to be more in a more positive and present mindset to even prevent getting to a point of panic to begin with and ultimately preventing most of my panic attacks which is great it's not foolproof doesn't work every time uh, and it, sometimes it's too late sometimes you know I'm at an event or sometimes I'm working or something like that. It's just not appropriate to, to use the medical marijuana, but uh, I will need to take a Xanax from, if I'm having a panic attack or something like that. So it, it, my point is I, I need both medications less and less, but also more and more, you know, to, to manage and balance each other. So it's, it's, it's a healthy balance and I, I like it and it's working for me really well, especially compared to all the SSRIs I've been through before. This is, this is manageable. I'm very thankful and very, positively focused on my current medication state it's it's working really great um and and hell like uh <laughs> 
while I did script most of this episode, uh, you know, I, uh, even though I'm overwhelmed, I in order to not be overwhelmed, I smoked before I came to do the episode. I made sure I wrote a little script first so I don't go all over the wall like I did in the other episode because I, I didn't want to do that for episode, this episode. But I wanted to just be able to let go of feeling overwhelmed for an hour or however long it's going to take me to record this and just be okay for, for a hot minute. And, you know, that's great. And I know that sharing all this stuff also helps me bring some sort of relief. I'm talking about it out in the open, uh, just letting it, it fly free. If you hear noises in the background, that's Echo. Are you the star of the show, buddy? Let me say hi. Very cute. I'm keeping that in. Uh, anyway, so yeah, smoke before the show, and I feel much better, and I feel like I'm, I'm recording a podcast. I'm not really thinking about, oh, I have to record the podcast. I'm just doing it. I'm getting the thing done. It's oddly productive. Um and and I know I'm just talking all this, uh, this about all this stuff about being overwhelmed and sh- it's kind of like shouting into the void and maybe it's it's only here to bring me relief. But you know the point of this show is, is sharing the experiences and hope that it helps bring people like you, the listener, some some level of relief or, or at least some level of relatability. I know shows like this have helped me before and that's the whole reason I'm doing it. So I know I'm just another random voice on the internet, but if that's helpful for you, then I'm glad. Uh, even if this episode's kind of shorter and a bit frantic because just at the core I am stressed out man like I'm just stressed out and tired no amount of, of marijuana can make me any less uh, tired in fact usually the opposite but stressed out though I'm currently currently less stressed which is pretty good um speaking of which I've been talking about my medications for the last uh, couple minutes or however long man no concept of time when I'm recording these things I, don't, I should have like a, a clock up I don't even look at my my computer clock I'm rambling now. Uh, we have some support today for the show from our friends at Moonwalker. Uh, and I've talked about them in another episode where we're talking about marijuana specifically. So if you're interested in more details and a more, uh, I guess, cynical spiraling thought process on all the the, the whole THC uh, as a medicine and variants and all this kind of stuff, go listen to, I believe, episode 32, uh, whichever one is. It, it should be aptly named. Um Anyway, yeah, Moonwalker, uh, I became affiliate with them for the show, uh, and so their support for that episode was there. A couple of you guys clicked the links. Thank you. That was great. Uh, and they're um, putting it back in for this, too. It's not really a sponsor. It's more of an affiliate thing. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to read an ad anyway because I'm actually going to talk about some of my experiences with this stuff. So they sell, uh, they're basically an online dispensary. If you don't know what Moonwalker is, an online dispensary. So stop listening if you're not older than 21. You're not allowed to buy from here. But uh, they ship to most states legally. And that's because they do a lot of the THC derivative tricks uh, and are able to actually sell these products uh, mostly legally uh, throughout the United States. And that's really helpful. Uh, there are a couple of states where it's not legal, so that's why I say mostly legally. But uh, for everywhere that is, you can get THC products, you can get CBD products, and all the derivatives, everything on that you, you could possibly imagine. I'm personally a big fan of the regular Delta 9 THC that's normal normal marijuana. Uh, they have gummies for that, that they have dose, uh, that fall under the farm bill, and those are great and fantastic. It's just like normal edibles. Uh, their Celestial Blend Vape, I'm also a pretty big fan of. That one's a more blend of different derivative products, and it's it's really good. I would say it's definitely weaker than in getting a high-potency strain of flour, but if you just need something to take the edge off the other day and you can't be loud and sticky, icky man, uh, stoner talk, bro, uh, you, <laughs> if you can't smoke flour or you don't want to have the impact of an edible, the, the vape is pretty good. Um, it, it, that's something that I personally keep around. And, of course... If you're a stoner, you do know that edibles and vapes hit way different than flour. You know, edibles tend to hit harder and longer. Vapes hit quicker and are less potent. And good flour always hits right where you need it, exactly when you need it in that moment. This this isn't part of the ad now, by the way. This this next thing I'm about to say. Uh, I just want to call out that medically, I am a fan of all three intake methods, edibles, vapes, and flour. Uh, in my personal use of tools like this as authorized medicine... Edibles are perfect for like long events or sleep. The vape is helpful for like a quick boost in my uh, appetite to help fight off uh, my personal like eating disorder issues. And then smoking any kind of good flour is just an excellent mood elevator and appetite booster, booster, especially on short notice. So if I'm going through a longer spell or if if I'm not in a place where I can uh, smoke a vape or flour, 
uh, I'll usually have edibles with me just in case I need to use it as medicine wherever I am or, you know, I, I'm not against medical uh, recreation, <laughs> not against either. I'm not against marijuana. Oh, I'm very former. I'm not against recreational marijuana. I'm just uh, being careful on how I state this because Moonwalker isn't advertising their products as medicine. I am just talking about analogs that do the exact same thing because they are the exact same thing. So I often change out uh, the things that I can get medically uh, that a lot of other people can't. So I can get different things that are not just online uh, derivative dispensaries. I can go to actual dispensaries and get real flour if I want to and, and some other state stuff depending on what state I'm in, but I have my medical card. So uh, I actually use these things in addition to the medical things. So Moonwalker's products to me are, are just as effective as medicine. Uh, so I, um, I usually prefer their edibles compared to some of the dispensary edibles. Uh, and lately, their their flour, I I was skeptical at first. So so it's THCA flour. So if you're smart and you listen to this podcast, you'll know that THC flour is just regular old Mary Jane uh, when it's burned. But as it stands, it is non aesthetically it can't get you high if you just ingest raw THCA. Like you couldn't put THCA flour in edible. Uh, Rob, why would you do that? Uh, you would always cook it, and that's kind of the workaround. Uh, it's just not Delta 9 until it's it's heated up, basically. Um, the problem, though, is sometimes THC flour is just sprayed on, like, some weak they, uh, hemp flour. Like, somebody will grow uh, hemp flour, and then they'll spray on, uh, basically, THCA raw chemical on the flour, and... It try to sell you just shit weed and it's usually not very good and uh really i usually look out for anything that's covered in like thc dab crystals i've had a couple of those and they're okay but they're just really weak i've, I've never had anything like that and i can't speak for moonwalkers pre-rolls i've not tried them but i recently tried their girl scout cookie flour that's the strain that they're basing it off of it's thca flour and it is top notch it is one of those that's sprinkled with the THC dab crystals. So I honestly thought going in, uh, it was going to be pretty trash. I thought they were going to be trying to compensate using the crystals like some of the other uh, products I've tried to do. Uh, and I've never had one that was good. But these, it, they're replacing my secondary strain that I usually keep. I usually keep like two or three kinds of weed, uh, whether it's a hybrid indica, Steve. I don't really pay attention to all that. I usually, actually, I have three hybrids right now. <laughs> um but I keep a, a couple of different options uh, in terms of potency and stuff around uh, for what I need medicinally or for recreation. You know, one, maybe one's my medical and one's my recreational, whatever I want to do. Uh, but my point is that uh, the this one's so good that it's, it's going to be like a staple that I'm going to keep around in addition to normal stuff that I get from medical dispensaries. So it's like it's not entirely replacing my whole stash. It's not that great, but it is really good it's so good that it's basically going to be one of my go-to's i think of it like bourbon like i i love having angels envy woodford reserve and uh i like having elijah craig around the house woodward reserve is like my go-to staple it will usually always be around the house uh and the thca and usually elijah craig is my favorite uh but uh angels envy is, is kind of hit me similar to the the moonwalkers girl scout cookie flower so yeah, that's a weird analogy, but I'm, I like bourbon and I like weed, so there you go. So if you're related to the bourbon analogy, that's like this is pretty good because technically Angel's Envy is better to some of higher end. I won't say better. It tastes is subjective, but it's higher end a little bit, ever so slightly than Woodford. It's a nicer, fancier uh, bourbon in my opinion as well. But yeah, it's that good. I would consider it that good. It's not good enough to be my go-to, but it's good enough to be my little treat or something that I have pretty regularly. So I highly recommend it. So check the description uh, with all the links for the specific product recommendations that I have. There's a bunch of links for those. Or you can just go to luna.echosbox.com. Uh, and when you go to that uh, URL, luna.echosbox.com, you'll get redirected to the Moonwalker site and you'll be automatically using our uh, affiliate code. So anything that you buy, also directly supports the show without you having to pay for anything else and you get some cool products cool man i suck at reading ads and i went on a tangent in my ad and i wrote most of that down that's how bad that was <laughs> but yeah if you want to support the show that's how back to my deteriorating mental health so medicine is helping me manage things that's that's going great and everything else in my life is objectively going pretty good i'm a bit busy and 
you know, I feel uncomfortable from a few things here and there that are going on, but I see no reason to feel as depressed as I do just because of those minor negative things. In my opinion, they're minor. Um, and it's because those things aren't causing the depression, right? Uh, I know why that is, but I don't see any other reason why. Like, those are the only negative things that I can call out, so that must be it, but it's not. I just feel really exhausted and frustrated. You know, I wish there was something obvious that I could point out like, hey, that's going on. Uh, that's what's making me depressed. Let's fix that. And I could just feel better. But that's the same thing I've been saying for 15 years. You know, depression is tough. It's hard to have hope sometimes when you're depressed. Uh, it's hard to have hope when you can't even grasp the feeling that hope is supposed to give. I can't really feel that. Uh, what, whatever you're supposed to get from hope, some sense of relief, uh, happiness. I don't know. I don't know what hope gives you. I, I have a hard time feeling that. I know it's supposed to be something positive. And I have logical hope, right? So I know that I may never truly feel comfortable. But logically, my hope is that I will always be able to manage things and I feel safe enough and confident in that that I'll always press forward. Damn, does it ever hurt like a bitch? Do I ever not want to live like that? It's fucking... Of course I don't, but logically I have hope. And I, I feel like I will be okay even if I never truly feel relief, full relief. You know, one day I'll be able to look back on life and when I die and be like, yeah, cool, you, you did it, you, you powered through. But I don't want to live like that. It really hurts sometimes. And this is one of those times where it really hurts. Um... So yeah, it hurts like a fucking bitch. Um, oh, one last thing that's been overwhelming me for a while that I feel like if you're a listener to this podcast, you should know about. Uh, my music under Jones is going to get a small Brie brand soon. Finally. Uh, it's actually been eating at my brain for the last uh, half a year. Uh, so don't get me wrong. I think the name Jones is great and that part isn't changing. I'll still be Jones. Uh, but the way it is right now, it's just really hard to find all my music. You know, search engine optimization already really, really sucks. If you're just looking for Jones spell, spelled normally, there's a billion different artists out there with the name. That's why I couldn't get it spelled regularly to begin with. So it just sucks, even if you're just finding it on YouTube where it is spelled normally. And then when you add in that weird uh, e-script I had to put in there, uh, since the regular uh, Jones was taken, it just makes it impossible because you can't type that on your keyboard. And even if you could, it would be one of those long press things that not everybody knows how to do. It, it it needs to change, right? Um, I've already had three people over like last month tell me that I need to do something about it because they've been trying to share my music, but they can't ever find it without going through social media. It just is stupid. So I'm not going to announce what the change is just yet since I don't want uh, the name revision to get taken before I, I put it in. Uh, but I did decide on a new name last night and it contains Jones. So it's still going to be Jones at the forefront. Uh, and you can even just call it call me that when you're referencing that. Uh, the name is kind of lame. It's just adding on a couple letters, uh, but it's all about that SEO, baby. Like, I don't care. It doesn't matter that it's just a little bit stupid. I did pick something that I at least artistically could work with. So my goal with this new name is to bust out with a new song and some new art just to launch the rebrand, and that'll be it. It'll just change. Everything else will stay the same. I'll probably won't do, like, over effort. I probably won't put, like, a whole music video or anything like that. But I'll make it obvious, like, hey, I'm still here. It's still the same stuff. Everything distributor-wise should get transferred over. Um, it'll work great. Now, I may end up doing the rebrand and art before I come up with a song. It just, you know, depends on how overwhelmed I am because the rebrand does need to happen no matter what, and it can happen at any point. And the earlier, the better. You know, I don't have any listeners right now, really. Uh, so I don't care if I accidentally lose... Uh, some kind of status or playlist thing that, I, that I'm on right now because I'm only on like one or two, I think. Um, and yeah, it's just, now's the time to do it if I'm ever going to do it and hopefully give myself a better shot at people being able to find it. Now, obviously, the goal isn't to be a super mega rock star or anything like that, but I want people to, who want to listen to be able to find it more easily. So if you see my music disappear at any point, don't worry. It'll be back within this that same day hope ideally either within the same day or within the day or two under this new name once i launch it and if i do it right it should it should actually stay in your library if you're already a listener and you've added my music to your library once the name change goes through if i'm able to do everything right it there's a possibility it could stay in your library that's completely out of my hands all i can do is give the distributor the correct codes and then it's up to spotify and apple music and all that to figure out 
the differential and sometimes that doesn't work out so well i've gotten really lucky as of late and it's not been a problem but this is a big change changing your name is is one that uh isn't just about at, uh, deleting and re-uploading a song and having the the metadata flesh out so it's possible it could all go away that's completely out of my control uh so just in case be sure you go follow it's jones music on all social media so that way when it does change you'll know even if that username changes it'll still redirect for a while so uh and maybe even permanently if nobody else takes i don't understand how legacy redirects work on instagram to this day and that is something i should understand better anyway um yeah, I'm, I'm tired now, and if I keep going, I'm just going to keep bitching about everything else that's been stressing me out, and I already had therapy today, so I don't feel the need to do it twice, so I guess that's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, I know it was kind of like a blather of overwhelming information and then a ad read about weed, but hopefully if you're about this podcast, then you're about that. Otherwise, don't worry. Uh, uh, next episode, I'll, I won't even do next episode until I have something of more substance to talk about. Not that this was enough substance, but I feel like I haven't had an episode where I felt confident in what I was putting out in a hot minute. So that's my goal for the next episode, even if it means skipping a few more. Hopefully I won't. Hopefully I'll at least do a quick check-in. But any in any case, you know, we've got a bunch of content out there. Go back, listen to old episodes. Just go to echoesbox.com and dick around. You know, there's more episodes. We can shop around for our book, our singular book. And, of course, go check out Moon Walker and support the show by going to luna.echoesbox.com. I'll see you next time. Here's some more heavy shit. Coffee back inside myself. I create. I can't.